in a second <laughs> for being here today. Looking out, I see so many who helped make the ADA real. The activists who gave everything they had to fight for that bill. The advocates who helped to shape the bill title by title. The policymakers who worked tirelessly to pass it, including, of course, our own president, Joe Biden. House Majority Leader, Steny Hoyer. And Congressman Tony Coelho. Thank you all. Every day, in every community, lives of the American people are better because of the work you all did. When people can ride a bus because it has a lift, when they can enter a building because it has a ramp, when they can watch a movie with closed captions, when a student with a disability goes to school instead of discrimination gets support. That is the ADA in action. The ADA gives all Americans the opportunity to fully participate in our democracy, in our economy, and in our society. The ADA gives all Americans the opportunity to determine their own future. Self-determination, which I believe the government must facilitate. That is the impact of the ADA. And after all, the promise of America. At the same time, truth must be told. The ADA was a very important beginning but there is still so much work to be done. Yeah. Both on enforcement and future legislation. And that is why I am so heartened to see the generations of leaders who are here and remain committed to doing this work. In fact, earlier this month, I met with several leaders of the disability community who are fighting for voting rights and they told me about the obstacles voters with visible and invisible disabilities face when casting a ballot. Long lines, rickety ramps, broken elevators, tables that are either too high or too low, complications with voting assistance. The list goes on and on. One of the leaders, in fact, said to me, she said, Vice President, equity cannot be achieved without disability being part of the equation. This is a fight that is a civil rights fight, a human rights fight. This is about equity and whether or not we are truly committed to the principles of equity in every way that we as government and as a society can enforce those important principles. And as we all know, that truth is not just about voting then. It is also about employment. It is about an education starting with pre-K. It is about being able to live in your home and participate in your community, which is also why we must invest in in-home and community-based services. So folks, here's the bottom line. The President and I will continue to fight with you to make America more accessible for all people. This work is urgent, and the reason we do it is obviously important, because every person in our country deserves the opportunity to dream with ambition, to have choices, to shape their own future unencumbered by any barrier, free from any obstacle, because this, as we know, is the very definition of self-determination. And this is the United States of America. So thank you all for your courage and for your commitment. And now, it is my great honor to introduce a person, a leader, who exemplifies all of that. 
Tyree Brown is an artist who lives in Maryland, and she is focused on building a future of her own design. I am grateful to her for his extraordinary leadership and that she is here with us today. Please welcome Tyree Brown. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello. <gasps> All right. Um, as it was said, my name is Tyree Brown, and I'm a 26-year-old Christian artist living in Maryland with faith in Jesus Christ. I was in a car accident that rendered me quadriplegic. Art and faith has always been a prominent part of my life, but everything changed after my injury. I could no longer walk or use my dominant right hand. I was sent to a rehabilitation center, National Rehab Hospital, um, then to a nursing home, back to rehab, um, only to go back to the nursing home where I stayed another 10 months. I was away from my home for over a year. While in the nursing home, a program called Money Follows the Person intervened, which the president supports um, investing more funding in. The home and community-based waiver program that helps those who choose to be home in their communities by supplying durable medical equipment, home modifications, and home health care services, a program that is made possible by the ADA. This program made it possible for my mother, Dury Cox, hi mom, <laughs> to be my full-time aide where I receive the best care full of love and grace. Um, I want to thank President Biden, Vice President Harris, and the Biden administration for being advocates for the disability community. With American Jobs Plan, there's a $400 billion investment in caregiving economy, okay? <laughs> and this will directly, positively impact my mother as she is my aide. Moving forward, my goal is to be able to access affordable, accessible housing to live in on my own more independently. I've been on the waiting list for three years, but I hope to move my own place soon. <laughs> I'm now home with my family and working as a freelance visual artist. I received my associate's degree at the Corcoran College, which is actually across the street from here. <laughs> um, I, uh, I exhibited my work at the Corcoran's Next Exhibition, as well as a Raw Showcase Exhibition. I attend Highway Deliverance Church, where I volunteer in the reading of the Bible for my pastor, Pastor Hughes. I am also a new volunteer with the Disability Partnerships, a nonprofit organization that aims to support individuals with disabilities like myself. I'm also a newly board member of Independence Now, also a nonprofit organization. Because of the ADA, I was provided with numerous services like the Money Follows the Person program. Um, the, F the ADA, excuse me, pushed for a more inclusive environment for wheelchair users, like making more public buildings and more public transportation wheelchair accessible. The ADA pushed for wheelchair ramps, curb cutouts, and public spaces, which made it possible for me to get around throughout my community. I was worried I would not be able to live independently and pursue my dreams of being an artist, but now there are programs that are helping me achieve my goals. It is thanks to the ADA, which paved the way for me with the full support of President Biden. Thank you, President Biden and Vice President Harris for advocating for the disability community and celebrating the 31st anniversary of the ADA. I am honored to be here and especially to now introduce President Joe Biden. Madam Vice President, Tyree, you're an inspiration. Thank you for sharing your story. 31 years ago today, on the South Lawn of the White House, President George H.W. Bush signed the Americans with Disabilities Act. He, surround, he was surrounded by disability advocates and bipartisan members of the United States Congress, just as we are today. Speaker Pelosi, welcome, by the way, Madam Speaker. Chairman Leahy, 
Leader McCarthy, Senator Casey, Congressman Scott, Congressman <laughs> where is he? There you are, Paul. You understand this better than anybody does. And I want to thank you, Congressman, for all your work. And I want to thank you all for being here. Second, uh, by the way, where's mom? Mom, is she here? Oh, she's watching. Okay, I thought she looked and said, Mom is out there. I was going to ask her to stand up. But, Mom, you can't stand up and, if you're home. But, uh, folks, give you a thank you for what you've done. The second gentleman is here as well. I'll thank him for being with us as well. And uh, some of the same folks who fought so hard for this landmark legislation are with us today. I just got off the phone with one of them, uh, a guy named Tom Harkin. And yesterday, two days ago, I was on the phone with one who just had his 98th birthday, Bob Dole. But no one worked harder than Tony Quello to get this done. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer. Others weren't able to join us today, but were instrumental in bringing this to life. Dear friends, as I said, like Tom Harkin and Bob Dole. And I also spoke, as I said, uh, Bob is, uh, is wanted to pass on his regards, as did Tom. Tom's up in Wisconsin working on, he said, on ADA, doing something up there, and I didn't, didn't explain exactly what. There's still more with us that are here in spirit, like Ted Kennedy, Major Owen, the Congressman Major Owen, countless other advocates. I was enormously proud to be a co-sponsor of the ADA, as Pat Leahy was as well, if I'm not mistaken, as a member of the United States Senate. And I'm proud to be here today as President alongside so many fearless champions who represent the ongoing legacy of this law from the foundations to its future. 31 years ago, after its passage, many Americans have never lived in a world without the ADA. Generations have grown up not knowing a time before it existed. But many of us can still recall an America where a person with disability was denied service in restaurants and grocery stores, and could be. Where a person using a wheelchair couldn't ride in a train or take a bus to work or to school. Where an employer could refuse to hire you because of a disability. An America that wasn't built for all Americans. Then we passed the ADA and made a commitment to build a nation for all of us, all of us. And we moved America closer to, to fulfilling that promise of liberty and justice, and maybe most importantly, dignity and equality for all. You know, and perhaps most importantly, we did it together. This was a Democratic bill signed by a Republican president, a product of passion and compassion, not partisanship, progress, it wasn't political, but personal to millions of families. I'll never forget the moment the ADA passed. And you may remember, Pat, standing on the floor of the United States Senate, and Tom Harkin saw recognition. He rose. And the first time, first time in the history that I'm aware of, in the United States Senate, he stood up and he signed in a speech to his brother. Tom wasn't just sending a message to millions of deaf and hard of hearing folks. He was speaking to his brother, Frank. It was personal to him. It was personal to Bob Dole as well, who lost the use of his right arm in a heroic effort during World War II, who laid out in a hospital for almost three years. His injury is listed, and they've also lasted an entire lifetime. But like so many Americans, he turned his disability, his apparent limitation, into greater purpose and will. He made, he made the rights of disabled Americans a lifelong cause. And for more than 60 million Americans living with disabilities, the ADA is so much more than a law. It's a source of opportunity, participation, independent living, and respect and dignity. The bulwark against discrimination and a path to independence. And for our nation, the ADA is more than a law as well. It's testament to our character as a people, our character as Americans. It's a triumph of American values. But of course, this law didn't bring an end to the work we need to do. Today, too many Americans still face barriers to freedom and equality. But thanks to this movement that spans all races, beliefs, backgrounds, and generations, we're once again making progress together. In my first day in office, 
I was proud to sign an executive order establishing a government-wide commitment to advancing equity, including people with disabilities. And I was proud to appoint the first ever White House Disability Policy Director, Kim Knoxted. Where are you, Kim? Where's Kim? Thank you, Kim. And I'm ensuring that dignity and rights of disabled Americans are lifted up in every policy we pursue, pursue from continuing to make sure that this administration looks like America, appointing people with disabilities to positions across the government. In the American Rescue Plan, we we're able to include substantial support for schools that better serve students with disabilities and expanding access to vaccines for disabled Americans. As part of my Build Back Better plan, it was already mentioned, we proposed $400 billion to expand access to home and community-based care. <laughs> Helping people with disabilities and older adults live more independently. And I'm glad that Congress is beginning to move on the Better Care, Better Jobs Act, championed by my buddy Bobby Kasich. Bobby, thank you. Which builds on that effort. This past year, the entire nation saw just how vital our caregivers are and how critical home-based care truly is for so many Americans. This legislation will help ensure that caregivers are fairly compensated for their work. In addition, I've also called on Congress to eliminate the discriminatory sub-minimum wage provisions that too often keep people with disabilities from getting good jobs with fair wages. Because of additional executive orders I've signed, we're working to remove barriers that hold back disabled Americans from exercising their sacred right to vote. And we're ensuring that the federal government is a model employer when it comes to wages, accommodations, and opportunities to advance people with disabilities. That's a firm commitment. And today, finally, I'm proud to announce a new effort the first of its kind to help Americans grappling with long-term effects of COVID-19 that doctors call long COVID. Many Americans who seemingly recover from the virus still face lingering challenges like breathing problems, brain fog, chronic pain and fatigue. These conditions can sometimes, can sometimes rise to the level of a disability. So we're bringing agencies together to make sure Americans with long COVID who have a disability have access to the rights and resources that are due under the disability law, which includes accommodations and services in the workplace, in school, and our health care system. So, so they can live their lives in dignity and get the support they need as they continue to navigate these challenges. We've made important progress, but we still have work to do. We have to keep going to ensure that every single American has a chance to contribute their talents and thrive and succeed. And I know that today's fearless advocates, some of whom are with us today, are going to accomplish incredible things. People like, like, excuse me, people like Mr. Toodle. Where are you? Stand up, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, uh, I want to thank you for your continued efforts to build an America for, for everyone. And as I said, you uh, courageous advocates who led the way 31 years ago, a long time before the foundation for progress is strong, though. It's part of the more moral bedrock of our nation and something every American should be proud of. Now it's my honor to sign the proclamation on the 31st anniversary of the ADA. I want to thank you all. May God bless you and all of you dealing with disabilities. You're, you are an inspiration to all of us. I really mean it. You're an absolute inspiration. May God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. And I'm going to walk over and sign this. I'm going to invite up, though. Nancy, come on up. Steny, I think we ought to get you up here. You are all, you're a big part of it, Tony Quello. Am I leaving anybody out? Pat, you, you were there at the time, weren't you? Well, get your rear end up here and put you. <laughs> the leader is taking his camera because Pat would rather use his camera than I think anything else. Okay. Come on.
Yeah, come on. Tony, you get right in the back here. You were a big, big, gigantic part of this. Anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act 2021. Hey. 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 I will, but I want to make sure I got all the. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Let's keep it going. Well Have to. 